Hi, this is Rich from Metamolecular. Today I'll show you a simple and fast way to render high quality chemical structure images without a server. I'll introduce you to a new JavaScript library for client side structure imaging called ChemVector, and I'll show you how to get started using it through some examples with code. Here's a structure search application mock up that lets you draw a structure in an editor. After pressing the search button, the app displays a grid of hit structure images. The standard way of generating these images is through an image server. However, this approach requires you to install and maintain additional server-side code, making your web applications more complicated than they need to be. The approach calls for careful design up front. For example, how will structures be identified? Smiles? Corporate ID? Does the implementation enable the display of arbitrary structures or only predefined ones? Where will the imaging code live? In a separate server? In the database? Who's responsible for maintaining it? This approach can also lead to reduced application performance as server requests are made in a bursty way with many happening at once for pages with many structures. Although it's possible to mitigate these issues through optimizations, including caching and code refactoring, this takes valuable time and resources. What if it were possible to render structure images directly from mole files without server-side imaging software? Here I have the same search application mockup as before. After pressing the search button, the app displays a grid of hit results. But instead of serving a collection of raster images created on a server, structure images are generated in the browser directly from mole files. Here's the source HTML. As you can see, it uses the object tag with a parameter pointing to the source mole file. Raster images are simply not necessary. The software I'm using is called ChemVector. ChemVector is supported on all browsers, including legacy releases from Microsoft. Here we can see the same app running on Internet Explorer 6. Although IE6 is 10 years old, the same JavaScript and markup used with a modern, standards-compliant browser can be used in IE6 as well. Getting started with ChemVector is fast and easy. Begin by visiting the ChemVector homepage, scroll down to the bottom, and follow the link to request a free copy of the SDK. Next, unpack the distribution. Contained within the root directory is a test page. This page shows all of ChemVector's features in one place. The diagonal lines over the structure images are a watermark that disappears when a paid license file is applied. Let's start a new project with the goal of displaying a chemical structure using ChemVector. Begin by creating a new project directory and dragging the ChemVector.js file into it. Next, add an index.html file with boilerplate markup. In the head tag, we add two elements. The first is a script tag to load the ChemVector library. The second is the ChemVector boot script. Now let's move on to the body content. Structures are displayed in ChemVector through the object tag. We begin by creating that tag, providing the width and height attributes. Let's make this a 300 by 120 image. The ChemVector object class identifies this object for use by ChemVector. Inside the object tag, add a param tag pointing to a file named molefile.mole in the project directory. Now, create that file. Because we'll be reading from the file system, we need to start a server instance. On Mac, this can be done using the built-in Python web server. With some browsers, this step won't be necessary. Now, when I browse to the index.html page, I can see the chemical structure. The image was generated entirely in the browser from the mole file referenced in the object tag. Mole files can be placed inline so that each page 
containing structures generates a single HTTP request instead of one for each image. To use this feature, just replace the parameter tag referencing a file with one referencing inline content. The result is a page that avoids an extra HTTP request for the structure image. Now let's say I wanted to customize the appearance of the structure by using a black background with light colored bond lines. I first create a CSS file to change the background to black. After reloading the page, the structure lines have merged with the background color. Next, I create a ChemVector style sheet. The syntax of this sheet is based on JSON and just holds key value pairs. In this case, the key for the line color setting is line hyphen color. Let's set it to a brighter shade of gray. I'll also reduce the line thickness. To get ChemVector to recognize this style sheet, I add a link tag. Now, when I reload the page, the bond colors have changed to off-white and the line width has been narrowed. ChemVector does a lot more than what I've had a chance to show in this short video. To find out more, get started by downloading your free copy of ChemVector today. Thanks for watching.